Hi everyone, welcome to ZV NFT. So the talk over the last few months has been AI. So I have to confess, I have been immersing myself into chat GPT-4, Jasper, Copy.ai, and all the other different AIs out there. And uh, I found it pretty exciting. I want to let you know though, I have not neglected NFTs. It's just less buzzy, but I believe that this is actually then the time to focus on it when everyone else's attention is somewhere else while recognizing that and learning along with you i also have been keeping my eye on how do we develop a collection that has a powerful use case in the nft marketplace so i have been playing a little bit of catch up to be totally honest right and so i just want to share with you uh, the bits that i'm picking up about the nft market and what's been going on Okay, so let's go through this together, together, okay? 2023 is actually expected to reach $22.69 billion in NFT sales. That's a pretty big number, but it's actually 39% lower than in 2022, according to an NFT market update. What I'd like to do is to go through some of the highlights here with you that, that caught my eye, okay? Look at the monthly sales volume in US dollars. Compare January 2022, whoop, all the way up here, and compare January 2023 when the markets, Bitcoin took a massive hit. And subsequently, uh, with all the scandals, the, the entire crypto industry tanked, along with the entire macroeconomic environment, which obviously uh, has an impact on what happens in the crypto market. But you can see there's been a steady rise. You know, February, there was a lot of good pumping and a lot of volume in NFT sales that tapered off a little bit in March. Uh, you can also see, though, that momentum, while it has been rising, right, Re indicating kind of a return uh, to the intra in the interest uh, into NFTs and the adoption of this kind of a technology, you're also seeing something else. So in 2022, there were a lot of crappy projects, right? It was just like a, a way a lot of people were able to make a lot of money, collections tanked, but people made money, right? But what what 2022 has lacked is quality projects. So 2023 is starting to see people coming up with collections that are more high quality, which is a testament to the long-term sustainability of the market, right? As I mentioned, the fact that Bitcoin has been pumping has a positive effect overall on the NFT market, you know, crossing that 30,000 threshold and okay, it's you know, keeps dropping 29.3, 28.9, I saw uh, just a short while ago. But, you know, it, it's hovering in that space, which is an overall positive sentiment on the NFT marketplace. This thing called ordinals have also emerged in NFTs, and, and, and those exist on the Bitcoin blockchain. That's a new development that's happened that can raise new opportunities for the entire NFT marketplace. I have to confess, okay, I'm not like... I'm not 100% clear on the ordinal, so I promise the next episode I'm going to figure that one out and play around with it because I know it's a pretty cool, interesting new technology. It has its detractors and its supporters, so we'll get into that, okay? The other interesting thing to note, if you haven't been following and catching up with me, is that OpenSea has significantly lost its market share as the NFT marketplace. Actually, Blur is a new one that has dominated NFT sales volume in March. And if you look at here, I saw, yeah, here we go, the market share. Look at this, right? Everyone's been open seeing ever since NFTs have, have had boomed and even busted. Look at OpenSea's market share today, right? And look at this new space called Blur. 65.5% of the marketplace, a market share, is actually owned by Blur. And that is something I think we need to keep our eye on. Oh, I wanted to draw your attention to the average trade numbers. I found that quite interesting, okay? And I just wanted to give you a little peek here. When you look 
at the average trade size per month, say January, February, March, right? You can see on OpenSea, the average size was $108, February 204, and March 2023, 27, sorry, $217, right? Look at Blur here, right? Look at the, look at the average size. You can see it's 2,140 up from 1,545. So you can see some of the trends here that are pretty interesting and you can see who's gaining an average trade size. What I thought was interesting to point out was that Theta Drop, right, which I actually have been following um, the Theta blockchain entire ecosystem in some detail. I find it actually quite an interesting value proposition, but uh, their NFT marketplace saw the biggest decline in average trade size by 73%. So you can see Right, so people would buy on average $447 in January, down to $58 only um, in March of 2023. So just something I'm keeping my eye on. Also, I wanted to catch up as well on what are the best-selling NFTs for good returns, right? So these aren't necessarily the ones that offer new or interesting use cases. These are ones that are just doing better than the rest, right? Um, some you'll be familiar with, some I was not. So, you know, Azuki's we all know uh, if we've been following the space. But uh, Mineable Punks were at the top. Azuki's at number two. Wrapped Crypto Punks released from Lava Labs at number three. Mutant Ape Yacht Club, Moonbirds, Bored Ape Kennel Club, Pudgy, Puddy Penguin, Crypto Punks, Bored Apes. All the familiar ones, right, that, you know, have been there for a while now, still making the top of the list. Uh, Nagamigos NFT is uh, ranked uh, number 10 here, and it was actually one of the most popular ones over the last couple of weeks, right? Uh, it has a, having a market capitalization of $18 million. I'll do a deeper dive into all of this to figure out why with the new collections, what's been going on. But for me, the takeaway here is that there's, you know, the, 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 the sort of gold standard collections are still, still have legs uh, in the NFT marketplace. Okay, so I have to pay attention to one thing, although I really don't want to because just don't like the guy, but President uh, Trump had dropped a collection uh, of uh, a first collection. There was something like 45,000 uh, digital trading cards here. And actually, you know, I think he raked in something like a million dollars from people buying this collection. I had to pay attention because a second collection was dropped and like, you know, really don't care about Trump, right? But what I thought was interesting here is that when he dropped the second collection, uh, there were aspects about what I was trying to understand as to why would people buy this? You know, does it relate to elections, an election coming up with him? What's the deal? And you know, I noticed here a few things. First of all, there were some good offerings, right? So anyone who buys 47 of these tokens, each of which were being sold for $99, um, would would get dinner with Trump in Mar-a-Lago. Now I'm not I'm not purchasing 47. I'm not purchasing even one. But the idea was buy it. You can have dinner with me, right? Uh, and there were other there were other aspects uh, that I thought was was interesting that were being built into this. That were, uh, for example, a Zoom call with Trump, right? Or cocktail hour at Mar-a-Lago. So really, it's the personality obviously driving the buys for people getting dinner with him, right? Um, so the other thing is that after the second collection dropped, which was kind of cringeworthy, right? You can take a look for yourself. Uh, you can see some of it here. It's like, okay, uh, you know, <laughs> Trump is a barbecue chef, an explorer, king of hearts, a lion tamer, you know, whatever. But, but the pricing for the first collection dropped after the second, right? So people just, you know, came here. And they wanted to see what they could get, what were the use cases out of this, right? And surely ahead of a potential election run, some, some way to build in hold, uh, opportunities for holders of these NFTs could come into play. Okay, moving on. <laughs> so in other words, my takeaway is, would you, would you buy one of my NFTs at the Luca Press Club if you, to have dinner with me? 
right? So I'm no Trump. Would, would you have dinner with me? I don't know. Is that a good use case or just kind of a cheap trick? I don't know. Would you want another Zoom call with me? Would you pay $99 for it? Actually, I'd, I'd be interested to know, okay? All right. This is something I think, you know, is way more interesting to explore, which is NFTs in healthcare, right? So ZVG, I, my team, we do a lot of work in the healthcare space around strategic communications, etc. And, you know, I, I'm paying attention to this. Is it hype or is it dope? And the use cases around healthcare are the following enabling patients to manage and earn money from giving data. So you buy an NFT, you know, you share your data, uh, you, can, you can earn money from it, you can manage your information and, and how much you earn from sharing it. People can take part in studies and clinical trials, right? So you can adopt an NFT approach to entice patients to engage in research. Blood bank supply chain. Now this was a really interesting one because blood donation organizations have actually already started employing this kind of technology and employing NFT blood donations. So you buy an NFT, uh, you can you can store this your blood in a virtual blood bank, right? So you give blood and it's stored in a blood bank and the, you, you can identify the demands for different blood types using blockchain and then dispersing those blood types to areas that need it the most. Okay, I don't completely get how that works, but I think this, this is an interesting proposition. Uh, also assisting in the fight against fake medicines, speeding up verification processes of, me of, uh, of the authenticity of medicine. So that's something in Africa, for example, you know, you have a lot, you have a lot of fake pharmaceuticals. So could NFTs leave behind digital traces or token IDs that make it clear that this is, this is a real medicine, not fake drugs, okay? And lastly, the information uh, protection from health monitoring apps, right? So when you're signing up um, to home exercise equipment, your Peloton, other health tracking devices, you know, how do you know that data is being used efficiently and controlled properly? And this could be a way to analyze and decentralize the collection of data. Um, you know, that's something that I think is another interesting use case. I want to reflect for a moment on my own collection, the Luca Press Club, along with Billy Bunton, who's the artist. It's been a bit of a challenge, okay? And the reason is, is because we uploaded the collection on OpenSea. We have done limited marketing for it because the use cases have started to change a little bit. And the reason is because of AI. So why would we follow our initial plan and really like kill the marketing on this, but the trend of the industries around us are pointing toward uh, a, a use case of artificial intelligence that I could actually integrate into the Luca Press Club. Initially, the idea was, and still in some part exists, uh, you buy a Luca, okay <laughs> newsroom luca and the fact that you hold it means that you have a right then to pitch a story something that you think is important and that you want done and then because billy and i have these you know great networks globally we would then find a way to tell the story for you right and we would put it on a platform and build partnerships and relationships within the media industry to get it more reach uh, but the entry is an NFT. And that also allows you to a private Luca Press Club where all sorts of interesting cool things can go on virtually and in person. But now there's ChatGPT4, there's Jasper, there's Copy.ai and a whole bunch of others, Dali and Midjourney, all of which we've been experimenting with, including this, this one called Th Synthesia, where you get a bot or you can have an avatar that looks like you and you just type in some words and it speaks, right? So of course I love that. Replacing television anchors uh, is what it's, di is the direction it's going. Um, but, but I'm playing around, right? And then I'm wondering if, if we go whole hog on our original idea, it will very quickly fail because technology is moving too fast. So what kind of stack could we build? What kind of really interesting uh, opportunity could we offer with the Luca Press Club that takes advantage of artificial intelligence. I just want to show you the Luca Press Club at the Luca PC Twitter page 
and you can still see a vibe of some of the pieces that we put out. There are 40 in the collection overall, lovingly handmade as well by Billy. It was also Luca's 10th birthday, would you believe it? I've had, I've had the, the actual guy, little Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, there he is, <laughs> for 10 years. He's now a grumpy old man, you know, but he's still the best. But this is, this is <laughs> Kerry Clarence Luca, or Western Luca, Cowboy Luca, Cowboy Luca. Anyway, so, you know, would love it if you followed, right? Not, not asking you to do anything right now, just, just, to, just to see what's going on. And if you have thoughts, I would love that. This is the full Open Sea collection before Blur became big. And I missed, I kind of missed that boat. But you could see uh, in February, Billy and I decided, you know what, let's just upload our Lucas and take one step in the right direction. And then we've paused so that we can reflect a little bit more on the value proposition that we're trying to offer in kind of a new media space, right? So please do take a look. Obviously, we would love it if we got like uh, one unique owner. <laughs> I told Billy, I'll just buy everything. So, it'll, you know, it will, look, uh, it will look like there's activity. But then that's not too cool. But there are some favorites that I have like Space Luca over here. Anyway, so that is what's going on with the Luca Press Club. In case you were wondering, you know, she mentioned this collection and then it just died. What happened? So that's what's been going on. That's it for ZV NFT. Nice to be back. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please smash the like button to tell me how great I am. Please, please, please like me. Please like me. Well, you don't have to if you don't want to. But uh, anyway. It's great to be with you. Thank you for spending this time with me and I'll make sure I keep up on everything NFT and I do my homework like a good little girl on uh, the Luca Press Club so we could really bring value to you. And by the way, I would love, love, love ideas on Luca if you have them. Bye.